So the purpose of this video is to finish up our process of finding a tangent line to a piecewise function at one a value of the domain break. Now, if you remember, we talked about checking for continuity first, and you do that by taking the limit from the left and the limit from the right and the function value at the point. If those are all equal, then the function is continuous. If it wasn't continuous, you would stop. There would be no tangent line at that point. If it is continuous, however, we can proceed to step two, which is to check the derivative from each side. So what we're going to do is write the definition of the derivative. And we're going to use the a definition this time. We could easily use the h definition. So I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. Now, when I'm coming at 2 from the left, this uses x squared plus 3, because that's the function where x is less than 2. So I'm going to use f of x as x squared plus 3, which is the function from the left, minus f of a, which a in this case is 2, so that would be 2 squared plus 3, all over x minus a, which is 2. So I take the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. That would simplify down into x squared plus 3 minus 7 all over x minus 2. Now that x squared plus 3 minus 7 is x squared minus 4. And that would, if I plug in 2 right now, I would get 0 on top, 0 on bottom. That's indeterminate. And both of these are polynomial, so we'll factor them. and then cancel that offending factor. And then we resubstitute. So when I plug in two here, that's gonna give me four. So the slope as I get close to two from the left gets closer and closer to four. Now I'm gonna take the limit as x approaches two from the right. Now when I'm coming at it from the right, the function that I use is the bottom one, because that's what is happening with the domain, when the x is greater than two, right? Now keep in mind this is a limit, it's getting closer and closer to two, and never actually equals two, so the fact that this doesn't equal two doesn't affect what we use in the limit. So when I do the f of x minus f of a this time, it's gonna be four x minus one, I almost wrote a plus there, let's fix that, minus, f of 2, so we're plugging 2 into this thing because we're checking from this side, all over x minus 2. So that would simplify down into 4x minus 1 minus 7, which is 4x minus 8. Over x minus 2. Now that has a common factor. So I'm going to pull that out. Now if I had plugged 2 into this previous step, I would have gotten 8 minus 8, which is 0, over 2 minus 2, which is 0, indeterminate. So I need to factor and cancel, and I'm doing that now. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of 4 is simply 4. Now notice how these two numbers are the same. That means that the derivative goes to the same slope from either side. And there's a rule that says with all limits, that for a two-sided limit to exist, the one-sided limits have to go to the same number. The derivative is no different. The derivative is a limit, and so for that two-sided derivative to exist, it has to go to the same number from both sides, and this one does. So we would then say that the limit as x approaches two from both sides of f of x minus f of two over x minus two is that number, and then this is the actual slope. It's the i rock. Now, if these two numbers had been different, then the derivative would not exist and we wouldn't have a tangent line. The limit wouldn't exist because the two limits from either side are non-existent. The limit represents the derivative, so the derivative would not exist. So to sum up, in order to check whether a function has a tangent line, if the function's piecewise at a domain break, you check for continuity. If it's not continuous, it doesn't have a tangent line. If it is continuous, you check the derivative from the left and the right. If those go to the same number, that number is the slope of your line. If they don't go to the same number, you don't have a tangent line because the derivative does not exist.